A couple of days ago, a Patreon member reached out to me and asked for access to a very old project. Unfortunately, it's super old. So I had to recreate it. And we started off by just working on a brand new 2D character controller with like a brand new finite state machine. And we'd made really good progress on that, but we came across the dash. How about a dash? Yeah, we can do a dash. And to be honest, I've never really done much with dashes. Dashes have always just been like, give it a speed, 300, give it a time, 0.1 second, go. We're gonna do like something here where we get the input of the player from the keyboard and we just apply velocity in whatever direction that is. And it'll work and it's it looks a little bit jank, but it's enough. Most people won't question it. But like if you're really designing a 2D platformer, you probably need to put in a little bit more effort. Right, so we got some issues. <laughs> All right, this might require more thinking. And so I thought it'd be a good time to try and do a study on the dash from Celeste and see if we can come up a way that we can create that in Godot. When taking on these programming challenges, I often get stuck on the more difficult math problems. But I've been using this video sponsor, Brilliant, to help improve my abilities so I don't get stuck for hours on stream. If you're looking for a fun way to learn math, data analysis, programming, and AI, then you absolutely should check out this video sponsor, Brilliant. Brilliant makes learning engaging and interactive, allowing you to grasp concepts by diving right in and getting hands on. Instead of passively watching lectures or videos, you get to actively explore and interact with the material. Each lesson is crafted to ensure you understand the concepts, not just memorize them. Plus, the content is created by experts from places like MIT, Caltech, and Google. Brilliant doesn't just help you learn, it helps you become a better thinker. By tackling real-world problems, you're sharpening critical thinking skills that can be applied to everyday aspects of your life. If you're looking to dive into programming, Brilliant offers a Python course where you can start creating your own apps and games right away, thanks to a built-in drag-and-drop editor. For math enthusiasts, there's a wide range of topics from algebra to calculus, all designed to make math both practical and enjoyable. To try everything Brilliant has to offer for a full 30 days, visit brilliant.org slash shaftgames or scan the QR code on screen, or you can click the link in the description. You'll also get 20% off an annual premium subscription. Thank you again to Brilliant for sponsoring this video. What we can do is just look at a frame by frame basis and you can sort of tell this is when I first hit the, the sprint key, right? So the animation starts, so you've got a point 0.05 seconds where there's nothing happening, right? And then she goes, and that's that's fairly easy. That's just visual effects. And the total uh, sprint before the animation ends is 0.24 seconds, so it's really quick. So you don't really even, it's over really fast and you cover that distance. And I think we can do this pretty easily. I don't have the animations or the visual effects, but we can at least get the feel, which will be pretty interesting. So let's let's see if we can recreate this. I think we can. At the end of the day, a dash is just a jump and it's velocity equals distance over time. The way that you need to think about it is it's almost like a trinity of different variables. You've got how fast you go, how far you go, and how quickly you do all that in. The Celeste guys are pretty smart. So I imagine that when they did that, that was determined like the number of uh, spaces that you actually move like in a very controlled way, there'd be a mathematical way of figuring that out. So if you move X amount of speed over a certain distance, right? It's the same exact thing, right? Mathematically, if we think about, hang on a second, let me cook for a second. It's the same as the get velocity, right? The distance divided by the jump time. So it's really the uh, dash distance, right? Divided by the dash duration. That is the dash velocity. So we can go funk, dash velocity and it's going to take distance which is a float and it's going to take a duration right and it returns a float all right so we got var dash velocity which is going to be equal to distance divided by duration and that would be how however many that basically solves the issue so now in theory 
uh, if you do this at the exact edge, you get a cross and you can sort of have control over these three variables. So you can define velocity and you can define time and let the distance work in itself out. Or as I like to do, I like to define the distance. I like to define the, the time that you spend doing that because those two things matter to like how the game looks and feels. I've been doing that for jump for ages. And it took me until today to work out that you can just do that for dash as well. Hey, scene change, day change. It's the next day. I'm not live. The next thing that we had to deal with was the pre-dash because the pre-dash is something that is very minute in Celeste, but it is still present and is something that you need to account for. It's relatively easy to do. You just need to have an animation, have a countdown timer, and then go. You need something that goes before that, like the pre-dash. We call it the pre-dash. I think we can find something within this set of animations. We'll probably just use the jump or the fall animation. You know, those frames to sort of make it look like he's doing something. This is probably where I would start. Yeah, we can start with like the landing, like go here, pre-dash, create. We don't need, it's 0 0.05 seconds. So that's literally here. <laughs> like the amount of frames we need is nothing. So we normally do it on 0 0.1 is the scale. We're not that. Okay, two frames is enough. It's 0 0.2 seconds. Maybe they'll like reverse them maybe. I reckon reverse these frames. So like this is what he's gonna do. And then he'll like go to the dash. It probably won't even be noticeable. Um, but we'll just go with that for now. So we've got the pre-dash animation. It does require us to change the code a little bit, but at the end of the day, it's relatively simple. We created the variable to hold the time. The dash animation we can write in here is just called dash, I believe. So we're gonna enter that animation automatically. That's already built into the state machine. And then we need to start counting down. I guess we do that with a, a variable. We can have like a, a true, a false, that kind of thing. Or we can say uh, if uh, pre-dash duration is greater than zero, then we need to subtract the pre-dash duration minus equals delta. There's nothing else to do here. We're just, we've started the animation and we're counting down. Um, and then we can say else pre-dash duration is greater than zero else uh, animation change requested dot emit and we go to the dash animation. So that'll change our animation over. And then we need to dash. However, we don't want to continuously call this. So we can just go uh, there pre, pre, pre dash completed uh, bool, and it's going to be equal to false. And I need to create a uh, function to reset all these variables every single time. Uh, okay, so then once this is done, we can go uh, pre dash completed uh, equals true. And once pre dash is completed, basically here we go LF pre dash completed is equal to false. So we just do the thing one time. We set it to true right here. We do the animation change request and then we start. So then we can say if pre dash completed, dash duration like that and so then we'll start counting down which will be good and we're going to do the dash here which works fine we call that once velocity and dash duration we hit a slight snag which is we needed to remember to make the velocity zero before actually starting the pre-dash um, it's not that noticeable when it's such a short amount of time, but if you did extend that for whatever reason, if you wanted to have a long pre-dash, then you would need to make sure that the velocity was stopped. I want to see it go a little bit slower just so I can make sure that everything's working. So I can go to the stats and I can make the pre-dash duration. The dash duration is 0.1. That might have something to do with it. Let's make it 0.25. Um, I still, I want to see this for a second. So let me just make this longer than it needs to be. Make a point one, which is really long. So let's run this again. Whoa. Okay. That's an interesting effect. It's definitely, he's doing the movement, which surprisingly works really well, by the way, but he still moves, which is really funny because I guess like the velocity, I'm trying to think like how this all goes together not emitting the the motion right like we're not updating the velocity why would it be moving like what is actually sending the character forward is it just the velocity is set there's no deceleration the character is just moving at that velocity i didn't realize it worked that way let's get rid of these Oh, what am I printing? I'm printing velocity. Of course I am. I think the answer is yes. It just keeps receiving that information. 
and then goes up to 512 and then it does its thing. We probably need to like set the velocity to zero. Do we want to do that? I don't know. This was only a problem until I slowed it down. Do you do that? I don't know. I think you do. I think we're going to do that. We're going to set our velocity updated dot emit vector two dot zero. And we might as well do, duh. we'll send off the input. That's fine. We should come to a complete halt when we enter this state. Um, it's, it'll be very short. Like obviously right now it's really exaggerated. Can I enter this in? Yeah, I can. So like, yeah, now that when you enter it, I think that'll feel good when you jump and you dash, right? Okay, so let's look at the timings on this. So I don't know about the timing. So I originally said 0.05 for the, for the pre-dash and then the dash duration was 0.25 seconds. I might need to pull that back up because it doesn't feel quite right. Maybe it's pretty good. And then the final thing that was perhaps the most trickiest was dealing with gravity. Now, the left and the right are relatively simple. If you're going horizontally, especially in a platformer, there's not a lot to it. We don't really want gravity to be happening when we're going uh, across from the left to the right. In fact, we don't really want gravity at all because it kind of just plays into this and it's a little bit too difficult to calculate. But what that means is that we're setting the velocity to something really high and then when we leave that state uh, we have gravity kicks in and it's not enough to uh, actually slow down the character and bring them back down to the ground and I really would like to keep some upward momentum but yeah the velocity is that kind of bothers me that it doesn't keep going so the problem is I feel like if you don't clamp it it's gonna look weird but let's have a look and see how that feels because I can tell you maybe it doesn't show up on camera but I could tell see how he just keeps going for ages it just takes what if I took the roof off how far would he go let's just take the roof off pretty far that's what I want it to feel like though maybe I need to change the upward velocity like the, the left and right feels really good, but the upward velocity is just like way too high. Half the y, y velocity, yeah. Or we apply gravity. Does there gra- I'm trying to think. I might need to like run Celeste to see how it feels. There's definitely no gravity, right? When you play that game. But I guess the question is like, if we had a certain velocity, how long would we do it for for the Y before we start applying gravity? If that makes sense. Like we need to cut it off and start applying gravity at a certain point. In order for us to still get to our 128. So we just, could we delay the gravity? Like start applying gravity at some point to the Y? Earlier than say the entire duration of the dash. We create one and we apply gravity the entire time, but we give it enough force so that it can reach that at that time. Or we try, like you said, and just halve it. If you observe these, especially in, as we're doing with Celeste, there's definitely gravity happening at the end of that, right? And there's definitely like deceleration. You know what I'm saying? So there's really a couple of different options. We experienced, uh, we experimented with just reducing the Y velocity for the dash. And that works pretty much, but it's kind of, it's the same, you get into the same kind of territory where you're not exactly confident that you're gonna know the exact distance that the Y velocity is going to go, depending on, you know, the, val the values and the variables that you change. Let's start with that. I think we'll see what that feels like. Uh, so we go if velocity. Okay. So we can say velocity X. Yeah. There is no gravity in, um, in the dash state. So I mean, it is kind of the right height. Like it almost works. It just feels really slow. So you can jump higher than you can boost. Right. I feel like that's a mistake. So the next thing that we looked at was looking at just clamping that to like a small percentage, like 20% of the previous value. And then when you go into the fall state, you're still going to go up for a little bit, but then you kind of come down. And that actually works 
pretty good. It does depend on the velocity again, so a higher velocity or like a greater distance traveled or if you have like a very small jump. So if you have a very small jump, then you have a low falling gravity and that'll mean that you'll float up a bit further than what you would. So if you said, in my case, 128 pixels, you might go an extra 64. Uh, this may be a problem, might not be a problem. And then the other option is obviously applying gravity throughout the amount of it. And that, that works pretty good. Um, to be honest, I think uh, clamping the value to be like 10 or 20% of previous, of what it was when you were going up actually looks better because you do end up with that sort of like float before coming back down. If you apply gravity the entire time, you don't get that. Basically, uh, well, the way we are doing it, we're calculating that it will be zero once you reach the end of the, the dash. So, you know, it's really just like a couple of options plus normalizing the vector, the input vector doesn't really work with gravity because uh, it just becomes really low or at least in my case it did. I don't know if I was experimenting with bad values, um, but overall, I think clamping the velocity, the Y velocity works best here. I'd be really interested to know what other people have done in this case, because for me, it seemed like a bit of a difficult one to deal with. And then finally, the last thing to do is the dash jump, which is something Celeste is really famous for. Uh, when you dash, if you jump, you get a little bit of a boost um, in velocity. The other thing is the jumping in the dash, right? Uh, you should be able to jump during the dash and get like a, a boost. So um, what do we do? We can take input. We can say if um, event dot is action pressed jump and uh, pre dash completed. We don't want to be able to jump during the pre dash. Then we can finish dot emit jump save. Okay, so we can jump. But typically in games like Celeste, you get like the speed boost from that. I'm currently doing all of this stuff in the exit, which means it's gonna get cold no matter what. And that is the clamping as well. So we can probably, the easiest way to do this is just go um, dash jump as a bool is equal to false. We set it to true here, dash jump equals true. And if ju dash jump is true, if dash jump, really, it's gonna be if not dash jump, then then we clamp velocity so you don't go sliding along the ground. You just sort of go back to normal speed. And that's really simple. All you have to do, at least in this project, all I had to do was simply not clamp the X velocity when I left jump. So if you hit the jump, we did not clamp those values. And so you got a lot more forward boost. And to top it off, we can, create a special state called the dash jump and that will allow you to jump again if you did it while you were on the floor so you know you get that added uh, skill feature as well so overall those are the aspects that we sort of looked at it was a really fun little project um definitely not visually as comparable to celeste but you know the best we can do with the current um <laughs> with the art that we had on hand but other than that, that's how you can create a dash. I had a really fun time making it. It helped distract me from the current outside environment, which is uh, pretty stormy at the moment here on the Gold Coast, which was great. If you found this video helpful, a like and subscribe is always really appreciated. Obviously, uh, you can become a YouTube member or a Patreon member. Uh, those higher tiers do get access to code support, uh, subject to availability, of course. Other than that, guys, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Something like that.